Hello and welcome to this very special episode. Today we are really fortunate to have with us the man who puts on many hats, but most importantly for us here, he is one of the co-founders and CEO of Rupee Prime Volleyball League. He was also the team director of Kolkata Knight Riders, also responsible for delivering one of the most successful junior events in FIFA with the under 17 FIFA Men's World Cup. But since I'm talking, I'll also take this liberty and say that he's someone that I'm personally really, really fond of. It's an absolute honor to have with us Mr. Joy Bhattacharya today. Welcome, sir. Hi, hi, Priyam. Lovely to be here. Thank you so much, sir. And to do this interview today, we also have Ms. Ishu Hiravat. Hello, sir. Hi, Ishu. Who's going to take it forward from here? So, sir, uh, basically, there's no buy bubble in season two, mm. you know, and we've you framed it across three uh, three venues. So we are done with Bengaluru and Hyderabad and now here we are at Kochi for the last leg of the league. So how has the journey been and what should we be looking forward to? The journey has been absolutely amazing. I mean, we went to Bengaluru because we said that it will expose us to a very different crowd. Karnataka is a very large market. Bangalore is a very sports friendly city. And I think we got that. The kind of crowds, more than just the crowds, the energy in Bangalore was absolutely infectious. In fact, sometimes it got too loud for 50 year olds like me and I said that, you know, you need to bring it down a bit. but. That is what you want. That's again what I call a good problem to have. A good problem is a problem which of plenty of. We had good problems in Hyderabad also. The good problem was how do we get enough tickets for all the people who wanted to watch the games. And I think these are good problems. So I think the league is really growing. But now when you come to it, this is the heart of Indian volleyball. This is Kerala. 36 of our players come from this state. This state is crazy about volleyball. So it's fitting that the climax of this league, which has been coming up so promisingly, should be at this state. So, you were talking about the good problems. We recently read an article penned down by you uh, where you were talking about the good and the bad problems of organizing a league. You are talking with the CEO of Blue Bay Prime Volleyball League. So, if you can shed some light on the good and the bad problems of Blue Bay Prime Volleyball League. You know, good problems are problems like too many people wanting tickets, too many sponsors wanting to be there or a sponsor wanting to be there and you don't have the right place to put them. You know, they want to sit center stage, but the owners also want to sit center stage. They also have a right. So those are good problems to have. Right. Where do you see them? Bad problems to have are, you know, you're dealing with a player, a really promising player who was stopped by the federation because they sort of almost blackmailed him into, you know, it's not coming here. And I don't, it's not that our league will suffer. But that player had to have, have such a fantastic opportunity to show his wares, not just to India, but to the globe. And for people like him to be stopped, that for me, every player that is stopped, you know, even if it's one or two, I take it very personally. Because I believe that this league is for players. Those, those are bad problems. Injuries are bad problems. And sometimes it's heartbreaking because, you know, somebody's practiced for six months, one year, they've got themselves fit, they come out here and yeah, it's just, it's just an injury. So those are issues that are bad problems and, you know, Obviously, those are the kind of things that we feel bad about, but we've got to move on, we've got to take it forward and keep going. Yeah, the show must go on. <laughs> the show yeah, must so, you know, the league is getting big to bigger. So, we'd like to know, was it, was it a part of the roadmap? Or, you know, you've already kind of executed what you wanted and you've exceeded what you thought about? No, I think the only... We, this is part of the roadmap and we're still growing, we're still developing, there's still many places to catch, but we're growing very fast. The big thing this year has also been just the fact of the World Cup, you know, the Club World Cup happening and FIVB being a part of it, that has really changed it because, you know, you have other Indian sports that are doing very well, you know, Coco is nice and there's Kabaddi. But at the end of the day, that's it, five countries play it, six countries play it, it's not an Olympic sport. Here, the World Club Championship is being held and I can tell you one thing, FIVB actually goes to more countries than FIFA does. You know, it's that many countries, almost 225 countries. So the fact that 225 countries World Club Championship is being held in our country and our champions going to play there, that's absolutely amazing. I think there we have exceeded ourselves. We thought that would take a few more years to do. Yeah. And also uh, the owners of the franchises are the owners of the PBL as well, which is very indifferent to the other leagues that happen. So how is the relationship with them and how are things balancing inside See, I think this is one thing that we think, this is not how leagues are held in India. But everywhere in the league, this is where leagues, this is how leagues operate. The Premier League is not owned by the English FA. The Premier League is actually owned by the 20 clubs and the 40 odd clubs below that level who make up the championship. Similarly, the NBA is owned by the 30 owners of the NBA. So, all we are doing is we are putting a world model which is far more efficient than an Indian model because what happens in this case is 
I invest, I'm an owner. You don't make money in year one. I'm investing in a franchise over the next 10, 15, 20 years. If after five years, the management changes and the new federation says, I don't want these guys, I want my friends instead because it's successful, then all that hard work is for vain. So we wanted to have a situation where the destiny of the future of volleyball, the league and the owners is firmly also in the hand of the owners. And as I said, the great thing about our owners is they're very passionate owners. They're very different kind. There's a Mr. Patodia, the way he runs his business and he's flamboyant and he brings a certain style to it. There's a certain, you know, you're looking at that, you're looking at Samir from Mumbai, they bring this sort of startup culture to it. There's Thomas Muthu from Kerala, very old school, but very cultured. So they, have, they bring very different kinds of strengths and very different kinds of advantages and looks and dynamics to our league. And I think that's what makes it special. It's not homogeneous. It's very different people. But all are passionate about that one thing, making this league a success. Absolutely. So you were talking about uh, Mr. Patodia. So uh, what were you in? I know that you're the CEO of the league and you have to be unbiased. But what were your initial reactions when you, uh, when you just saw that a team from Kolkata got inducted into this league? And uh, we know your connections with the city of Joy. Uh, what are your thoughts about the activities that are being undertaken, uh, say, in the city to kind of promote the game of volleyball, the sport of volleyball, uh, which is not a mainstream sport in that part of India? What are your thoughts about that? So, as I said, I have had more arguments with Mr. Patode than I have had with any owner. <laughs> By far, you take all the other owners and you take this there is absolutely no doubt that the kind of passion that he brings to the sport and the kind of passion that he brings to the game is extremely important. And I'll be very honest with you, no, not one of the other franchises have done half as much actual groundwork tournaments as Kolkata has done. The, and the great thing is they could have easily done it among their friends sitting in South Calcutta or Central Calcutta. They've gone to villages, they've gone to districts, they've gone where volleyball needs to go. And they have worked, and those are the hard yards. Because, you know, in, this is fertile terrain for volleyball. It is much more easier for Mr. Mutu to do something or for Safi to do something in Calicut than it is in Kolkata where sport, I mean, football is a big sport, then there's cricket. Volleyball was a decent sport, but in the last 15, 20 years, because of the way the federation has been run, it's just gone into, receded back in the distance. So to bring it back and to do what they're doing out there is absolutely outstanding. And I wish them the very best because I believe that the interesting thing about Bengal is it's fertile for sports. So it'll take you a little more time to seed it because it's tougher and because volleyball has been so long, absolutely in oblivion. But once you do seed it, the kind of spectators and the kind of support you'll get in Bengal, and you'll not get in any state because Bengal is a sports crazy state. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very true. So, uh, we know your emotional interest with Kolkata. Did you feel happy when we won the last season? I will <laughs> not say anything. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything on camera. May the best team win, but yeah, it's a, it was a terrific team and I think the way they won it, I think. I mean, Ashwal and even this year, the way that they're playing. It's a joy to watch because it's not just it's not just about one player. It's not about Rashwal and two stars. It's about the way they play together as a team, the way they they combine as a unit, and it's 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 really it's an example of how a top level franchise should play. Uh, when Joy says that it's a joy to watch us, I think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so you know we have the quiz master to ourselves today. So how could we go without a supersonic rapid fire <laughs> with you? I am I I am better at asking questions nowadays than I am at answering. But hell, I'll take yeah. what you show. I'm sure you're gonna bombard everybody mm, uh, with what you're gonna say. So uh, let's begin. Absolutely. Yeah. So which is the most professionally managed team at the PBL this season? Difficult to say because I think they are, they are very different strengths. I think Kolkata, for example, is a very organized team because they know each other very well. Right. Okay, yes. and they run each other very well. I think some of the things Bangalore does is very interesting. Uh, I think their fitness wise, they work a very different strategy on fitness, and David Lee, their coach, brings a very different energy to it. And I see in their own way, Hyderabad has also done something different. So each of them have their own strengths, but they're all, they bring different looks to the tournament, as it were. And which is the highest spirited team that you see? Difficult to say. I think, very interestingly, I, th I think Kolkata is the most resilient team. Very difficult to throw them off their game. Spirit sometimes, as I said, it's all in front of home audience. I mean, so suddenly, you know, Hyderabad in home audience with Guru Prashant playing was up there. But, you know, yes. the real challenge is, will they be able to do it? Not in their home court, right you know. And which is the most promising team for talent scouting? 
That I'm not going to comment on. <laughs> there is absolutely no way. I'm telling seven other franchises exactly what to do. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm going to make it easier for you with the next question, which is the most troublesome thing. Oh, no doubt at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Sumit and Pawan make it absolutely easier. No, I, I'm actually just joking. Because troublesome, these are just, you know, we talk with each other and we banter with each other. No, none of the teams are really troublesome. I think, think the, see, the big thing is, if you are going to do a league and you're going to run a league and you're going to run something successful, you're going to be asked inconvenient questions. Because if everyone is going to say yes to everything you do, you're not going to grow. Right. Exactly. So all I'm saying is that in day one, the product that we had, in day one of this season, to where it is now, there are lots of small, 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 small changes which make it better and better every day. And those changes happen because every franchisee asks questions, not because they want to show us to be bad or good, but because they want to say that, can this make the league better? Sometimes it can, sometimes it cannot, but it always pushes the anti forward and forward. And I think that's important. So last but not the least, which is the most fun team to watch, to be around with? I think all of them are fun <laughs> teams. And I want this thing on that. They are all fun teams. And I think the most important part of it is that most of it, whatever, there's often on the court, there's often, you know, pressure, there's tensions. Once it's off the court, I see them in the breakfast table, they're all together, it's right. fine, absolutely yeah. fine. They're finally and that's wonderful. the best part, everybody's united. And absolutely, and don't forget, that's one of the reasons why it works also because, remember, because the owners are also part of the league owners, uh, even if they don't succeed personally, as long as the league succeeds, everyone succeeds, and I think that's important. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your time. It's been, an, uh, like always, as I say, it's an absolute pleasure to kind of converse and interview you. Uh, we can just keep the camera rolling and you can just keep talking. No, yeah, it's off. lovely to listen to what you say and the way you put forward things. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for joining Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. That was the CEO of Rupee Prime Volleyball League, Mr. Joy Bhattacharya with Kolkata Thunderbolts. Thank you so much for watching. We are going to be back with another video very soon. Till then, this is Priyam signing off.